Hello, boys and girls. I'm Pearl of Wisdom, and you're listening to my NHL Pearl of Wisdom. And today, we're going to be ranking the rest of, well, some of the rest of, every player in the NHL's offseason. We just did up until Montreal. From Columbus to Montreal, we had the sports beard on. Go check out those videos. They were fantastic. It's so much fun. My favorite part of these videos is I do one take, no editing, straight out, get her done. And the reason why is because I like to talk to everybody in the comment section. I like to have time for that. And you'd say, well, are you telling me you only do one take just for that? It really does take a long time for editing and everything that goes on and taking takes. So if I make mistakes, just let me know in the comment section. It's not that big of a deal. I love hockey. I think about it all the time, and that's the reason why I do this. So we're, today, we're going to be starting off with the Nashville Predators, and we're going to go from there. Comment. I want to hear what you got to say about my picks, and give me your number. Give me what you give for everybody from 1 to 10 pearls. So it's going to be from 1 to 10 pearls. A lot of people do the grading system, A to whatever. I don't know why. I'm just doing it this way. It's all part of the Steel Flyers All Sports Network and the Pearl of Wisdom Show, which if you subscribe, you can be part of. I do live feeds with Peyton on the radio, the uh, Off the Wall John, a lot of great YouTubers out there, and you can have fun and come and chat. It's all interactive. Really love to have you. Okay, let's go. The Nashville Predators, and this was really tough to grade because honestly, on the surface, you would have to, I would have to say that the Nashville, Nashville Predators probably should be rebuilding. But when they didn't trade Philip Forsberg at the deadline, maybe I thought, you know what, this team can't afford not to make the playoffs. You got to make money, man. And they'll do something at the deadline where they trade his rights, but I didn't think it was likely. The, apparently, during the playoffs, Nashville didn't sell out all their games. Now, if that, that being the case, and tell me in the comment section if there's any truth to that, uh, you can't really, you can really, uh, an owner can't really afford to do a true rebuild and lose for the next three years if you're already not making money with the team that you have. So they just simply had to get better. Now, how is the Nashville Predators going to get better? Since they really don't have superstars up in the front, up, up at forward, they have Roman Josie, who is a superstar. I think they would have had to go with depth. You gotta be able to. You can win with depth if you don't have superstars. We've seen it. Uh, Colorado does have a superstar, and they do have depth. But in this league, with a with a flat cap, a lot of teams have a hard time building their third and fourth lines. So what did Nashville do? They signed Philip Forsberg, who, which in their situation, I don't mind the deal. 8.5, I think, was probably the number. In fact, he probably could have got nine or over on the open market. For eight years, it's going to bring him till he's 35. Hopefully, for Nashville's sake, they have a fan base by then where they're not so needing to make the playoffs every year and they can work out something when he's at it at that maybe they can start rebuilding when he's at that age but i understand the deal and i don't mind the deal nino niederreiter picking nino reader up niederreiter up at four million dollars i think was pretty solid nino has moved around from the islanders to minnesota to carolina and from what people wonder why he moves around so much and from what i understand from several uh things i've read He's a bit of a loner, sort of a different dude. Um, you know, maybe not go to all the team functions, likes to go home and, you know, be with the family. And people can consider that not so much of a team guy. But you know what in Nashville? Duchesne was said. That was said about Duchesne before Nashville got him. And he seems to have worked out just fine. So this could end up being an absolutely fantastic deal because Nino Niederreiter on the ice is a really good two-way player and he adds some excellent depth 
to Nashville and can put 24, 25 goals. What's wrong with that? That's hard to find in this league. So I think it was a good deal. Not to mention you have Philip Tomasino, who I think down there on the fourth line, there's no way he's going to be there. I would put him up with Johansson, and it says Tobin in here. Um, I think Tobin might find his way somewhere to add more depth. But as it stands right now, Johansson, Tobinen, and Tomasino, I think, would be what the line would be. And then you have my one of my favorites in the land, Tanner you know, another 24-goal scorer last year that just plays his heart out every shift. I just love that kid or guy. He's 25, he's older, but still fairly young. And you can put Niederreiter in with Sissons and Janot. That's a pretty darn good shutdown line. So you got a, a, a top-end, top nine there that can compete with just about any team. So in that way, I thought they did very well. Uh, then, you know, Yakov Trenin, Sanford goes down on the fourth. It's a pretty good, it's a really good top 12. For defense, and then we have to go talk about the next move. Again, if you're going to go for it like they were going to go for it, and you kind of have to, Depth is the way to go. And the move to get Ryan McDonough for Myers, who they got for Ellis, who I believe they knew he was going to be an injury problem moving forward. They gave Myers a shot, who I don't know what happened to that guy. He looked like he had so much promise in Philadelphia. Nashville, who's better at developing defensemen than Nashville? Seriously. And they couldn't do anything with them at all. So he goes to Tampa Bay. They'll give it a shot. And they get Ryan McDonough? Yeah, I'd say that's pretty darn good. Ryan McDonough of the three cups and fantastic defensive defenseman, That's he's going to be on your third left D. Not too many teams can compete with that kind of depth out there. So I, I think Nashville did very well considering what they wanted to do. And Juicy Soros will hopefully, and I believe will, get a little more uh, ability to play less with Lankin in the lineup. I know his numbers don't look good, but in Chicago, it was a terrible year last year. And then when he first came in the league two years ago, they gave him a shot. He looked really good. I think there's a lot of upside to this guy at 27 years old. And I think he has the ability and has shown to have the ability to play more consistent games than Ridge did. So I liked a lot of the things they did. Now, you're going to say, well, what's the mark? Oh, yeah, before I go on, the, the, the draft. Getting Joachim Kemmel at 17. Just put it this way. Joachim Kemmel was on on most draft lifts way higher than he, could, than he was taken. He's got a killer shot, but the rest of his game has to needs a lot of work. So he is a long-term prospect, really. He's got There's a lot of work that has to be done with Kemmel. But I thought it was a pretty good pickup as well. I gave them 7 out of 10. Uh, uh, the only reason why it's not higher, and I almost wanted to give it higher, is this team probably isn't a contender. And it's not. It's really tough to be in that gray area where you're barely making the playoffs, not getting middle, getting middle draft picks. It's hard to become a true contender doing that. And the, your best thing to do there is usually rebuild. And because they're not rebuilding, regardless of the reasons for it, I got to dock some points, dock some pearls off of that. Tell me in the comment section what you think, Nashville fans, after you sub up to my YouTube channel. All right, New Jersey, or sorry, uh, yeah, New Jersey Devils. And high marks right off the top getting Palat. I think this is exactly what New Jersey needed in this lineup. Uh, several cups on his mantle. A fantastic two-way forward. Like, really fantastic two-way forward. And a veteran one at that. He can help these kids become better two-way forwards. And I think they have a lot of players, young players here that are capable of doing so. Yes, for Brat, Jack Hughes, you know, they're young. And it's the part of the game that doesn't usually come right away. 
And it certainly seldom comes if you don't have anybody there to really give you the benefit and show how important it is to play that way. Guys like Jack Hughes and Jesper Bratt and Dawson Mercer, they've been able to survive on their offense their whole career, their, their young careers. Now you're in the NHL, and we saw it last year, and we can you blame the goaltending. People, I've heard people blame the defense. I think this defense is fine. So yeah, you got Graves, Severson, Siegenthaler, Hamilton. That's a solid top four, man. Solid. I think the forwards two-way play is really what the problem was with New Jersey. And the goaltending, of course, is going to be – they definitely need some goaltending. But the combination of the two – was a dumpster fire last year. And if anybody's going to do it, Andre Palat's going to do it. Paying him till 2027 for six mil, yeah, he's going to be long in the tooth by them, but they can afford to have a guy like that. I loved it. I thought it was a fantastic move. In fact, I like what Fitzy has done with this lineup overall for the most part. Um, then, of course, was the Zaka trade to get Eric Halla, uh, and got they got Eric Halla back, and I believe a draft pick, second round pick, or something of that nature. I don't know what happened to Zaka there. I, I think one of the problems was that Zaka really wanted thought of himself as a center, and they got huge in Heischer. They're not going to be playing any. They're not going to be playing up the middle. So he goes to Boston, where they desperately need centers. He's happy. Boston's happy. We'll see what happens with Zaka as a center in Boston. But the fact of the matter is he wasn't fitting in New, Jer in New Jersey. Eric Hall is okay. He's a filler guy right now. I, I imagine there's going to be some young players like Alexander Holtz, who isn't a center. Um, maybe Pino. You know, to, it's going to eventually take that center spot down the road. It's not totally ideal, but it's not bad. And I, they got some value for a guy that just wasn't working out. I'll give him the benefit of the doubt. It wasn't a bad, it wasn't a bad move. Um, trading Ty Smith for John Marino. Again, I don't. He fell out of favor last year, Ty Smith, and it just he didn't look good. I don't know if there was commitment issues or whatever, but he never looked good in uh, New Jersey last year. So you get a guy like John Marino, who at 25 years old has still upside and is a great two-way two -way defenseman. He's going to help right now. And, he, and the great thing about this deal is a guy like John Marino at 25 years old, if the fantastic depth that they have in Shakir, Makamadoulin, Simone Nemec, who I think I've heard could play right away, but I'm sure they'll be, you know, as they'll take it as slowly as possible with him. But I've heard he can play right away. By the way, the deal of Nemec and not taking Shane Wright, I've heard so many people say, so many scouts talk about something to do with his attitude. Conceited or something like that. I don't know if that's true, honestly. But if he was... That's probably the reason why he dipped. And the other problem with him was that he had an agent that is ruthless. And it's getting to the point, especially in the cap world as it is today, that is a factor. You can actually have this happen if you have an agent, something like that. Teams are also looking for players that are willing to be take money off their salary to help the team. Colorado, look at their organization, what they've done. They've drafted players specifically like that. How they've come up with that in the interviews, I'm not 100% sure. But if you show in signs that you're not like that in interviews, you could drop. And Nemec has got a hockey IQ like you wouldn't want to believe. I, it's, I, like, I like it. I can't not like Nemec. And then, of course, you have Hughes, who also is coming up through the ranks here, and he could take a spot in a second. Like, he looks absolutely fantastic for the United States right now in uh, 
Luke Hughes for the United States right now in the World Junior Championships. And Makamadoulin, my gosh. So somebody pushes him out, you can still get a first-round draft pick for Marino. And you replace the Ty Smith pick that apparently didn't seem to be working out for you. So I think it was a really great deal. And finally, we'll look at Vanacek. And I, there's been a lot of criticism for their pickup of Vanacek, think, people thinking they needed a, a better goaltender than him. And that could very well be true. Uh, but if, they were go, if you're going to take a flyer on a guy, I think Vitek Vanacek was a pretty good guy to take a flyer on. One of the reasons is Washington has never been known for being very good at developing goaltenders. Uh, the goaltenders that they've had ever since Holtby, and you can say, well, they developed Holtby. Yeah, but Holtby was already talented as hell as it was. How many goaltenders have they had? Look at Sam Sonoff. Like, there's been a lot of goaltenders that have gone through Washington system and been good somewhere else, but not in Washington. So why not take a flyer at this guy at 3.4 who had... There was times last year where he looked really, really good. And Washington's defense last year was not good. So I think this was a good flyer. I agree, though, it would have been nice for them to get somebody much better than that. Might not have been out there. But overall, I think Fitz did very well with New Jersey. And I gave them an 8. All right, next. The New York, oh, tell me in the comment section what you think, New Jersey Dallas fans, about that. Tell me what your score would be from 1 to 10 if you if I missed anything or what have you. Okay, New York Islanders. And my score from 1 to 10 here is got a question mark beside it because there's still all the rumors in the land about them being after Kadri and trading players away to make room. And Lou Lamorello does this almost all the time. He does not get everything done right away in the summer. He does, like, his Letty move was, like, right at the deadline last year. He signed a whole bunch of players just before the season was going to start. That's kind of what he does. But as it stands, they didn't really do much of anything except for get Alexander Romanoff at the draft for the first. Now... I heard a lot of uh, back and forth on this. Some people liked it. Some people didn't like it. I thought it was okay. If Honestly, at 13, I believe it was, if they got, if you get a player like Alexander Romanoff, you got to be pretty happy. So they needed defensemen. They needed, it was better to be young defensemen. It's hard to find young defensemen. And they seem to be really good at, dra at developing defensemen. So I'm going to give them the benefit of the doubt on that. But it's the lack of activity that everybody, that I'm sure a lot of people out there are pretty frustrated with because this team just missed the playoffs. And they don't have trots, which is another thing that you're like getting very uneasy about. No trots. You got Lambert there that's never, you know, kind of a rookie coach. It feels like they're missing the playoffs again. I gave them a four with the question mark beside it. Tell me what you guys think, Islanders fans. What do you think about all the rumors out there? What do you what would you like to see done on the island? I mean, this is another team where they're approaching rebuild mode, really, in a lot of ways. They didn't sign bars all. You gotta be feeling a little bit antsy, right? I would have to say so. All right. Tell me in the comment section, sub yourself up. New York Rangers. And the New York Rangers had a lot of tough decisions to make, let's face it. Uh, I think they're going to get, whoops. I think they're going to, a lot of people were very unhappy that they didn't sign COP. But to tell you the honest truth, I didn't think they were going to sign COP. And that was simply because he's a Detroit guy. I have a not like I didn't think they were going to sign him. It seemed like he wanted to play in Detroit right from the get go, and that was a rental, and they knew it was going to be a rental. It was a good rental if you want to make a run. I mean, Cop is a good solid dude. 
Uh, couldn't trade it to Detroit. Detroit wasn't going to give up prospects at the, the stage that they were at in their development. So he goes to the Rangers, gets to enjoy New York, play in the playoffs, and then Detroit gets him. So not much you can do about that, I would think. I don't think it's a wrong thing to get to rent cop in the situation they were in. But, and then Strom as well, letting him go. He, got, he only got $5 million a year. For the for the LA Kings, and people will point to the fact that he played with Panarin and really got 50, 60 points. Didn't have a huge, a very huge offensive season considering the position he was in, and that's fair. The question is, will Vinny Trocheck be able to do any better? Fifty-one points last year, and he played with guys like Svechnikov. You know, he played with some pretty talented blokes. Had some strong years early in Florida, but it's kind of been eh, ever since. I think it's a lot of term for a guy who's been rocky. But, and he's also overrated defensively and five on five. And the New York Rangers, as far as I'm concerned, are going to have a very difficult time winning a cup. As long as you got Shesterk in there, you always got a chance. But until their five-on-five five improves, in which I did not see that happen this year. Also, Philip Heedle. This takes a spot for Philip Heedle. Unless Trocek's going to play on the third line, which, okay, fair enough. At 5.6, is not terrible on the third line, too. And Heedle moves up, and they add some depth. He will, Heedle, I think, is going to be a good five-on-five five player. But overall, I'm not so sure about that contract. I don't think it's terrible. I don't think it's bad. Tell me what you think in the comment section of what of that contract for the Rangers. Um, but I'm on the fence about it. And I'm on the fence of really what they did in the offseason because – that, oh, and then they let uh, Jordan, or uh, Jor- Gorgiev go, which I'm fine with getting Halak. Halak, I think, will mesh okay with Shesterkin. Apparently, people don't like Halak. There, I've heard lots of talk that he's a little difficult of a dude in the room, but I don't think that's going to affect Shesterkin at all. He knows his place there, and I think it'll help out a lot that you got a goaltender there, unlike Gorgiev, who... Is trying to be a number one somewhere, and he's going to get the chance to in Colorado. You have a guy that knows he's not going to be the number one and should be completely comfortable with that. Um, He's had his ups and downs the last couple of years, though. So Overall, getting Kako signed, I still think Kako is better than a lot of other people do. A 2.1, fine move. Nothing wrong with that. Didn't really do all that much. Can't say they really improved their team. So I gave them a five. It's one of those in the middle. We'll see what happens. I still would like to see some players that can play some better five on five. Samuel Blay, isn't it? You know, Barkley Goudreau isn't it, but they didn't go out and get him, but he's still not it. Like there's not much on this lineup that has shown me that they can be strong five on five. Okay, tell me what you think, Rangers fans. I gave them 5 out of 10. What did you give them? Ottawa Senators. Comment in the comment section. Sub up to the channel. Ottawa Senators. And, I mean, they made a big splash, didn't they, this offseason? Alex Dabrinkat. Getting Alex Dabrinkat for a first, and a, that's first, what, second, and... A fourth or something like that. Ridiculous. Ridiculous. That is amazing. They scooped him out of Chicago. I think he wanted out of Chicago. Probably gave him a couple teams that he would go to. And that ruined their leverage. And Ottawa certainly snapped up that leverage and took it all the way. I love this move for Ottawa. I loved getting Claude Giroux for some veteran leadership for this group. He's from Ottawa. He brings pride. He brings everything you want in a player at 34 years old. 
little 6.5 for the next couple of years. But the thing is about Claude Giroux is apparently he is a workout nut. He is an extremely well-conditioned athlete, even for well-conditioned athletes. So he that he may ride that out pretty darn good. And now this depth from the forward group is insane. Kachuk, Norris, Giroux, Dabrinka, Stutzla is going to have somebody to play with. I mean, the sky is the limit even for next year for Ottawa with that. As far as on defense is concerned, that's where they could still use some work, right? Uh, Travis Hamannick shouldn't be there. He's he's not in top four defenseman now. Sorry, but Artem Zub probably will be there. And Zaitsev, you still got him kind of flailing around there. Nick Holden holds a spot. Now, of course, you got Sanderson. How can he be? in his first year. And I think that's the reason why they didn't go out and try to add anybody else because Sanderson takes a spot here and the defense looks a little better. Maybe he can even play with Shabbat. Move Hamannick down here. Zaitsev gets booted out and this lineup, it's a bit of a question mark. Goaltending, getting Talbot, it's okay. Talbot's not that great, but it's a good veteran to help Anton Forsberg or the young. Where is he again? I always forget his name. Sogard, Mad Sogard, who they're waiting to come up the six foot eight goaltender. And, you know, he can help in that regard, whoever is going to be there. But I think Forsberg really had some great games last year and he took a big step up last year. He could easily take another step up, and this team's got a number one goaltender, and Talbot's going to be okay as long as you don't play him too much. So I gave him a 9.5, yo. 9.5, just for the Debrinkat move alone, right? That was a beautiful, beautiful move. If I missed anything, let me know in the comment section. Tell me what you would give Ottawa Senators fans or otherwise. The Ottawa Senators from 1 to 10. Next, the Philadelphia Flyers. And, well, you probably heard it in my voice there, didn't you? The Philadelphia Flyers, I don't know. Everybody says the same thing. What are they doing? Nicholas Delorier, 31 years old. $1.75 million for a cheerleader. I don't get it. I don't get it. I guess he's an energy guy. You know, he needs they need to change the energy in the room, but you couldn't do that cheaper than that. He must be like the best cheerleader in the land. I'll tell you that right now. If you're going to give him 1.75 to play on your fourth line on a cap strap team already. The disappointment of not getting Goudreau, I don't even think they were in on it. They can't re get rid of James Van Riemsdyk's contract. They weren't willing to take retain because of their future cap issues. And they hire Tortorella, which should be a plus. Tortorella will get almost any team into the playoffs a lot of the time. But that's all I even think Tortorella could do with this lineup. And that's bad. You don't want to be just barely making the playoffs when there isn't much in the cupboard as far as prospects are concerned. This team is not a contender on paper at all. So you're just going to get your middle-of-the-road draft pick, maybe make the playoffs bubble and out you go. The only thing I can say is getting D'Angelo at $5 million for 2024 is a pretty, pretty good deal. Get almost a point-of-game players make more than $5 million a year. It was a good deal. It just, it's not the deal that was, it doesn't matter, right? That's the problem. It, these, this team should have been looking to completely retool, redo this whole lineup, not grabbing a guy that can make you better. It's, if Joel Fairby comes back and he plays in here in the top, 
we're left wing with Hayes and Konechny if, he's, if Hayes isn't injured. Atkinson, Conturier, maybe they bubble, but I have really nothing good to say about anything that they did, except for, okay, Cutter Gauthier. And a lot of people wanted Juracek in that spot. But I'll tell you, they've been going with these power forwards, Tyson Forster, Cutter Goche. He's going to be a power forward when he plays, if he plays. And if you were looking to have the old Philadelphia Flyer mentality back, I do say that's what you do. Power forwards are hard to find. And that's what Philadelphia, that's what their identity has always been. So I'll give them a little bit because it looks like they're trying to head down the direction of being the old Philadelphia Flyers again. That's about all I can give them that. Philadelphia Flyers fans, tell me what you think. I gave them a two. I haven't given too many low marks out there, but I had to give Philadelphia a low mark here. It's just not very good. Okay, Pittsburgh Penguins. And they're bringing the old people back. This is the year, like in Boston, of bringing the cast together for one big, maybe more, attempt at winning a cup. So, apparently, Crosby talked to Malkin and convinced him to sign this $6 million contract for till 2026. That's what I heard. And you have Zucker Raquel at $5 million. It's okay, I guess. Um, it's not great. He hasn't been good for a while. Like, really good. He's only been average. So you got an average guy. On paper, this team shouldn't make the playoffs. It's the same old thing with Pittsburgh. On paper, this team probably shouldn't make the playoffs, but they probably will because they have a compete system and culture in there that is built around Sidney Crosby, and Sidney Crosby himself will put the team on his back and get him in the playoffs. Are they a contender, though? Going out and getting Jeff Petrie uh, for, you know, is a statement saying that we're trying to win now. He's going to have to revert back to what he was two years ago for this to be a really effective move, and he could very well do so. You know, two years ago, they were talking about Petrie was in Norris conversations halfway through the year. He's also a guy that seems to have energy issues when teams aren't doing well. So he's going to have an exciting team to come to, a legendary Pittsburgh Penguins team. My, I have a feeling he's going to do well. I have a feeling he's going to do really well. Jan Ruda, a couple more cups in the room. Nothing wrong with that, I suppose. But, I mean, overall, he's not a fantastic defenseman. Marcus Peterson's better than him. So you put Peterson up there, and you've got a good defense. And, of course, the Latang move at $6 million. Almost a point-a-game defenseman for $6 million a year. It's okay. It's it's a shot in the dark, and what will happen? You're hoping that it's not one more one round. I mean, last year they could have went a lot further if they didn't lose Jari against the Rangers, right? It's always been if. It's been one round, out in the first round, out in the first round, out in the first round. Is this the year where that happens again and it's all blown up? Tell me in the comments section, Pittsburgh Penguins fans. What do you think about what Pittsburgh had done? Uh, they did get a draft pick, too. They had a first round draft pick. And where is he now? Pickering. Owen Pickering. Big, solid stud defenseman. And they're really good at drafting the developing players. Manitoba boy. Meat potatoes. Not going to be great offensively, but big boy. 6'4". He's a project. It's going to take a while. But nice to see them get a first round pick. All right. I think I'm going to finish it there. And we'll look at the rest of these fine teams in our next episode, my friends. What did you think? I want you all to comment in the comment section. Sub yourself up. Comment in the comment section. And tell me what you're 
from 1 to 10 are for all the teams we did today. Until next time, this has been the Pearl of Wisdom Show. And all the frolic in the land. I haven't did that for a while. Here's a little Perlo dance for you. Come over to my channel. There will be frolic. If you like the frolic, you'll like it. If you don't, you probably don't want it. Have a great day, everybody. Okay, bye.